All right, so uh, just a little bit of an update on the, the Oldsmobile here. Um, basically got to as far as we can go right now. Uh, we're probably going to pick this up in the spring. It's not too far from running, but there's still a big list of uh, little things to do. And uh, we have to get my dad's car out of the garage soon, so we got to get this thing moved. Last time we were swapping the oil pan out, we got that all installed now. Actually fits pretty nice on the G body here. You guys are thinking I'm picking up that pan. It's, uh, it's got lots of room there with the 455 anyway, so it doesn't hang below the cross member too much. Had some issues with the shifter linkage here. Uh, I had to shorten it. I still think that this bracket here for the shifter on the tranny is the wrong one. Um, right now it's, uh, it's just temporary. We just got it uh, hooked up so it goes in the park, but it won't uh, shift all the way down the first. This piece here is too long or something, so I did shorten this to a uh, because before the cable was sticking out too far. Uh, drive shafts in. I think I showed that in the last video. Uh, starters in. Got uh, exhaust manifolds are all back on there. Uh, just a little piece of pipe on there for now just to point the exhaust out towards the ground a little further. We'll eventually have to get full exhaust made up for it. Once we put the oil pump in we have to upgrade the oil pump drive shaft that goes on the bottom of the distributor it, uh, it's a thicker one stronger if you use the stock one they tend to, to break with a high volume oil pump so it's basically just cheap insurance that's on there uh, distributors in carbs on cams in we've primed it already uh, basically now we're just down to finishing off the transmission lines. I got uh, most of them made up here. Still have to finish that one. It has to come around to the cooler here. So I just have rubber hose to join to the lines. Right here, just loops around. And then the other line I'm going to try to bring out as far as I can around the rod to meet up with another fitting there and then just have a little section of the transmission cooler line if you do this you don't want to you want to make sure you get the stuff that's actual transmission uh, oil cooler line it's a lot stronger and holds up to the heat and the oil better if you just use the regular 3 8 fuel line it will cause you issues it's the transmission cooler is a lot more uh, Higher pressure than the fuel line stuff or the regular fuel hose. So, one other thing I decided to, to do was uh, change the fuel pump. This one's uh, flows a lot more than the stock uh, replacement one that he had. Uh, stock one flows 35 gallons per hour. This one I believe is 85. It's an older Holly one. So we're gonna use this one for now. Uh, that'll at least get him going without having to replumb the tank and sender for uh, the return line on it. Uh, other than that, uh, next thing is just got to get the pulleys on, get the, the hoses all hooked up, spark plug wires, um, got to wire up the distributor, MSD box, coil, there's still quite a bit left. One more thing if you're changing from a Chevy to an Olds. Um, the starter's on the driver's side now, so you have to swap over from the battery would usually be on the passenger side. There is a spot for it on the on the driver's side here, so it just uh, makes the cable routing easier. Plus, you put your battery in the trunk. It's up to you. So that's going to be it for this one today. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of this. And uh, hopefully before the spring. Thanks.